So most of this bunkering that was going on, foreign sales, illegal sales, these guys need funds now. They are the fighting force. Mm. Piracy is not so enjoyable because the Navy has put in firepower, have put in presence, have put in technology. You, the, you, you said you know? something that has caught my attention. You talked about how armed robbery is now no longer uh, as lucrative as it used to be. Because Is it because people have become, become more aware and have put measures in place? Or is it because uh, what precisely has informed that? No, you see, the financial environment, mm -hmm. it, the time armed robbery was very, very sweet, was when you can walk into somebody's house that is not a corrupt person, and you see hard-end funds in the house, market women. They keep up to 50, 300,000 in their houses. So when you do house-to-house -house robbery, you can come up with a lot of money, load them in your car, and drive off as a gang. But now even the market women, the bank marketers, go to them at their shops in the markets and help them to lift these funds to the bank. So the money is not usually in the houses anymore. So it's not so interesting, unless you want to come for gadgets, like phones, like television sets, and all of those things are no, so, you know, there is a way to block off your phone now if it's taken. And in the computer villages where we have phone deals, like fairly used phones. You know, the police have also gone in where you can't easily just trade off a phone. And a phone can be tracked now. I can track my phone and find my phone, and it's no more interesting. So now, kidnapping is actually a good fundraising criminal activity. So you now see the trend moving from armed robbery, where I need to risk myself, rent arms, and most arm robbers, they rent those arms, they pay for those arms. Most of them don't have an armory. They just call themselves together and source for arms through the dealers. Now, we risk our lives and all of that. We hit the bands and all of that, and we may not get up to. But if I pick an individual and I hold the person down, and the families are begging me to take 10 million, 20 million, hello, it became an alternative and they needed to fund their drug addiction. They needed to also fund their ammunition acquisition. They needed to also fund their presence. Mm. Because they had presence. We have not really exploited our forest regions. You know, we looked at our um, um, engaged community and we gated our communities and we put patrolling systems. We put lights in our communities. We forgot two gray areas. The creeks and the forest region. So when you see some kidnapped victims and you ask them, how was it? They say, ah, we were almost 50 in that place. So they were even feeding us. And sometimes I do some form of negotiation for my clients. You know, I help some people even in this last one. You know, so let, let me... Let, let's talk okay. about, you know, you, you said that we've put... You've talked about the reason why armed robbery is no longer lucrative. It's no yeah. longer as lucrative as it used to be. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you ever... Do you think that... When we look at the trend, I think it was the House of Reps members we had talking about uh, kidnapping and giving statistics on, you know, the trend. And it will look like we, according to them, we have over 1,500 cases now annually. Do you ever see a time where kidnapping would be reduced, where it would become less lucrative? And what do we need to do to ensure that it becomes, you know, less lucrative for those who engage in this act? Excellent. You know... When you want to secure money, you increase the security of the money. You put in security system in the money, identifying a fake currency and an original currency. You recall when this ATM card was very easy to breach, and somebody can even look at your card and just clone it and withdraw your money. Now, they came up with a lot of security systems on the ATM card the PIN code, the this and the that. Now, the asset being kidnapped is a human being. You heard what the professor was saying. We need to first of all create a, an internal defensive system in the human being. The children, the parents, the school staffs, the school workers. Then we're also looking at the school security system. Now, if you could really create an awareness opportunity for these kids, 
You know, she talked about the lonely road. I've trained some kids where I told three children to walk towards two men that were coming. And there was a vehicle trailing the two men. We did a scenario of a kidnap. You know, when the men held one of the child, the other two ran in opposite directions. So you limit the opportunity to get the three children at the same time. No, training is very vital. Now you look at the adults themselves. All of them that drive their kids to the school, drive their kids out of the school, they are transcending the whole of the environment where these kind of opportunities come. When there is a PTA meeting, the cross of discussion should not be on the amount that was increased for buying water. They should look at what they saw in the surroundings. I attend so many PTA meetings. Then you now look, she said, the outer environment. I went to communities and I taught them, we need to lock down this community. Now, when a kidnapper gets into a school, he picks the kids or staff. He needs to live with the assets he has come for. So your concern should be basically on his living. How? So if he came by water, he may want to live by water. So if there is water environment, then you may have fishermen, you may have commercial activity people on that water. So you need to call them together. You need to have some security discussions with them. Mm, but then you, if, if they I'm are living... At, I'm looking at a situation where this armed, assuming they were heavily armed, yeah. how much really can community people do, or even the students, or even the school, for instance? They, are, they, they, they will need to lock down. Let me give you an example. There is, we, we looked at... Without endangering people's lives. Yes, yes. Because if yes. a kidnapper finds himself in If a, a kidnapper is living with a vehicle, mm -hmm. he will drive that vehicle out of the community. And once he started, there were gunshots, parody gunshots. Anybody with a vehicle or a, a, a trailer or whatever in the area can drive it across the road. There are exit routes and block it up, come down from the vehicle and hide somewhere. Mm -hmm. When they drive out with the kids now, Everywhere is blocked with vehicles parked on the road. Conclusively, how yeah. do you think that schools are taking their... I mean, well, we've had these cases of kidnap now becoming very rife with schools. Do you think that schools are, be, are beginning to be a lot more conscious? Or do you think that they're still a little, a little like a with uh, security, especially around kidnap cases? They are very, very conscious. But it's, it's, it's an error. Because being conscious does not mean being active. When you are conscious, you know what to be done. But are you taking those steps? You know, the first thing schools look at is budget. We must not forget that. The parents don't want to pay a naira more. The school don't want to spend a naira more because they are in business. They are profit making. But they need consultants to come in to say, you are conscious of this risk, this threat before you. What are you doing? to contain it. That's definitely a very fine place to leave it. Roy Ohidiave is a security consultant and also an ambassador for the Nigerian Army School of Public Relations. Thank you for coming on. So Thank nice you very me. much. Well, the program will continue shortly. Do join us again.